Chapter 5 is coming to an end soon. We've pretty much experienced everything that it has to offer. I mean, technically, when they bring back the Chapter 2 map for next month's OG season, it'll be a part of Chapter 5. But come on, that's like a separate thing. Anyway, over the last year, Chapter 5 has gotten a lot of criticism, and I may have been one of those people that didn't have very nice things to say. But today, I wanted to take a look back at the four main seasons of the chapter and answer the question, was Chapter 5 actually bad? This was a very bold move for Epic to release right after we were playing on the chapter 1 map with simpler weapons and simpler graphics and we're thrown into chapter 5 with new mechanics, new movement, new UIs unfortunately, weapon mods and new modes. But did this move work? I'd say yeah. I mean, the stats seem to support this. We went from 1 to 2 million active players every day in Chapter 4 to anywhere from 3 to 5 million active players in the OG season, and Chapter 5 carried it pretty strong with around 3 to 4 million. Real quick, I want to say this is a Battle Royale review of the chapter, but we do need to talk about the new modes because they were such a big deal, and they were such a nothing burger, man. Festival is okay, but yeah, when Fortnite allows us to uninstall certain modes to save storage space, these are hidden in the recycle bin anyway battle royale new map this one is nice but at the same time so ugly i'll try to explain this as best as i can just from looking at the mini map image especially at launch with all the snow this map looked really vibrant and nice and i did like some of the locations hazy hillside and classy courts maybe i just really like snow in this game but then you have stuff like the chaparral biome they took a really realistic approach this time around and sure this does look like a chaparral biome in real life but i don't want real life in my fortnite i feel like the train was a pointless addition the slipstream in season 9 for example was way better but that's enough about the map before we talk about any of the new items we got to talk about the movement if you played week one of this season you know. The animations and movement speed were changed a lot. The movement speed was just a horrible decision. Luckily, it didn't last very long. Epic was very quick to change this, and the state that we have it in now, I guess, is fine, but none of it should have been messed with in the first place. Let's talk about the loot pool now. Brand new chapter comes with a whole set of brand new weapons, and let's just speed through all of them. Striker AR. It's a scar with a faster fire rate. It's really good. Nemesis AR. Another attempt from Epic to make an AK just like the Heavy AR and the Ranger AR from Chapter 3. It's not good. Hammer Pump Shotgun, it exists. Frenzy Auto Shotgun, basically combines the speed of the drum shotgun with the damage of the attack shotgun, insanely overpowered. Hyper SMG, it's an SMG. Thunderburst SMG, surprisingly really good. Ranger Pistol, it's just a pistol. And the Reaper Sniper, with weapon mods, easily the most overpowered sniper we've ever had. We'd also see a huge change to the gunplay entirely, making every weapon projectile, so now you have to lead your shots on an AR. Even with close range fights, if you're using an AR that doesn't have a scope on it, you have to lead your shots, control the recoil, and deal with the randomness of bloom. We also had the ballistic shield, which was pretty strong at launch but got nerfed, grapple blade, kind of like a tamed version of the ODM gear, and medallions. On day one, these were insane, but it didn't take long until the shield cap was added, the regeneration was slowed down, and then they were just alright. I haven't even gotten to the weapon mods yet, because this season just added so much. I've always been against adding weapon mods to Fortnite, just for simplicity reasons, but the way they were implemented with going to a station and just buying mods using your gold was probably the best way to do it. And after playing with it, I can safely say that they're not good. Sure, we all probably prefer having a drum mag or a scope on our AR or SMG. Does it really make that much of a difference? And is it worth adding more RNG to the floor loot and only being able to mod your weapons at certain places on the map? I want to give this season a 7 out of 10. It was just fine, but I feel like every chapter 5 season is going to lose points for its projectile weapon because that is such a huge change to gameplay and for the worse. So season 1 underground will say 6.5. 5 out of 10. This was one of the biggest map changes on a season launch that we've seen in a while. We got two new biomes with Mount Olympus, Brawler's Battleground, the Underworld, and Grim Gate. The Olympus biome was kind of just different colored grass, so whatever, but the Underworld biome was really unique, and the green water made it pretty fun to play in. This time around, the medallions would all be unique and give you different abilities, and I think everyone knows that the aspect of agility giving you the green water dashes infinitely was the most insane one. The mod benches around the map were changed, they're not in the season 1 
boss locations anymore, but instead in weapon bunkers that don't open until the second circle in the match and not all of them open every game. Weird decision, but all right. For the loot pool, we saw the new Warforged AR, which a lot of people don't care for, but I thought this was a pretty strong weapon, especially the mythic one. We got a new DMR, which I thought would actually play fine in this new chapter five meta where everything is projectile, because that was the main disadvantage of a DMR before, but no, it's still ass. The Harbinger SMG replaced the Hyper SMG. They're having a mid off. We got the Gatekeeper shotgun, and I'm trying to think, is this the most overpowered shotgun we've ever had? To go along with the Greek mythology theme, we got the Zeus Thunderbolt, which was kind of the same story as the Goku mythic. Like, it's really cool for a day, and then you realize that when someone uses the item, they're left incredibly vulnerable in the air. The Wings of Icarus were cool to use just to get around the map, but not something you want to use around other players because those wings were now a part of your hitbox, and even with projectile weapons, it was so easy to shoot people out of the sky. Also, the Chains of Hades would get added later, which were actually pretty good. During the season, we got the Rise of Midas event, which introduced moddable versions of the drum guns and hand cannons, including a mythic Midas drum gun, which was alright, but it just doesn't hit the same. We got the Avatar event. The water bending was so fun to use. I actually didn't care that it was a projectile weapon because it was so good. Air bending was such a great mobility item, and I hope we get a non-collab reskin of it to have in a future Battle Royale season. And then there's the fire and earth bending. Again, they're having a mid off. This year's May the 4th Star Wars event was horrible. I think in LEGO they got a lot of stuff, so maybe that was fun. But for Battle Royale, we got the Chewbacca weapon, blaster rifle, Vader, and they called it a day. The one redeeming quality was that we got the Cantina Band jam track for festival, and they allowed us to use our jam tracks as lobby music. And we did end the season with a mini event that I didn't even know was happening, so I was caught pretty off guard dropping onto the map and seeing the Mount Olympus statue light up in the sky. Season 2 was kind of all over the place and focused on random events instead of the overarching Greek mythology theme that we've been wanting in Fortnite for a while. Also, random fun fact, this season was when I released my Locker UI video, and that's actually when I was able to get my critter code, so use code Tedesco in the item shop by the way. I'd say the gunplay was worse than season 1, so I'll give season 2 Myths and Mortals a 6 out of 10. Here we go. Season 3, Fast and Furious. This has got to be up there with Season X as the most divisive Fortnite season of all time. We can all agree that on day one, the cars were busted. Season 3 came with a brand new wasteland desert biome and a mesa above it. And can I just say, this desert is one of the most beautiful biomes Epic has ever added. And it is such a shame that there is literally nothing there. We did get the new Redline Rig, Brutal Beachhead, and Nitro Drone POIs, each having a boss. The Ringmaster Scar boss always spawns at her location in Nitro Drone but for the other two, there's a chance they're just driving around the map in a convoy, and if that's the case, what is the point at landing at the rig or the beachhead spots? And again, there is nothing else that Desert has to offer. We got the new Nitro mechanic, and this season the medallions were insane, especially the one that gave you infinite Nitro. Basically, infinite sprint, run faster, no fall damage, bash through walls. I have to admit, it was fun to use, and I mostly play zero build, so I can't really speak on how annoying it probably was in build mode to fight against people just ramming through your walls. But let's talk about the cars. We've had off-road tires and cow catchers before and they were fine, so I don't understand why it needed to be cranked up to 11 this time. This might be controversial to say, but I never liked cars in the first place. They're just a boring vehicle and the first one to use fuel, so I will say a really good update this season was the new service stations that made it so easy to refuel. Anyway, the turrets were ridiculous, the mythic cars regenerating health made them unstoppable, and it's all very reminiscent of the mech. You win a game with them and it might be cool, but then you start to see there's two options. Options. Either you use the meta vehicle, farm a bunch of elims that didn't take any skill and win the game but don't really have that much fun doing it, or go against the vehicles and you die trying. Like I just want to play normal Fortnite man. But that's when Epic graces us with one of the greatest updates yet, the addition of Fortnite Reload. I know this is a chapter 5 battle royale review, but Reload is battle royale adjacent based on that concept and those mechanics and the last team standing wins. So I'm not going to spend that much time talking about Reload, but this mode is amazing. More engaging than Battle Royale in my opinion and absolutely saved Season 3 for me. We had the Pirates of the Caribbean event and I was just playing Reload the entire time. We had the addition of Fall Guys in Fortnite with the obstacle course on the map and after this got removed, does anyone even remember that Fall Guys skins and creative maps exist in this game? Because I honestly forgot until I made this video. Not that memorable. And the Chapter 2 Abductor minigame was way better. We ended this season with another mini live event that I tried to record but I accidentally died. 
And to give this season a rating, strictly Battle Royale, not Reload, I'm gonna have to give Season 3 Wrecked a 4 out of 10. Lastly, we have season four, the second Marvel season. I talked about this one before in my is every season four a good video, which you might've seen. By the way, subscribe if you haven't already. And I don't think this season had a good launch. Starting off with the map, there's sort of a new vibrant forest biome, which aesthetically looks great, but everything in it except for Doom's castle is just whatever. The guns in the loot pool are good. Like for ARs, having both the striker AR and the new moddable burst AR, they're really strong. So ignoring the Marvel items, I think this probably has the best gunplay in loot pool this chapter but then you have stuff like the jetpack which is a must use item i will say we've had jetpacks before and they sucked so this was by far the best implementation of it and i think it just proved that jetpacks don't work in this game they're either really bad or insanely strong we kind of got thanos back in a way with this new doom island where you could capture it and transform into dr doom but it was a really low chance of spawning in matches and then we got the day of doom ltm which didn't even hold a candle to the end game ltm from 2019 we had a whole cutscene and doom fight in game which felt really pointless in the last update of the season fort nightmares 2024 it's good and they finally removed the jetpack on top of that in ranked matches we got siphon back they removed cars and a few other items as well so the gameplay in there feels really grounded we're expecting a full live event but that should happen on the very last day of season four to take us straight into chapter 2 og so it probably won't have any effect on season 4's rating and even though I just said that the ranked gameplay and Fort Nightmares were good, I still can't give it a high rating. But put the pitchforks down and let me explain. I'll give you three reasons why Season 4 was not that great. One, the jetpack. Even though our prayers were answered and it was removed, it was still in majority of the season. Two, the Chapter 5 gunplay. Again, every season this chapter is getting held back by the weapon mods and projectile based weapons. And three, the unused potential of a Marvel season. This just didn't even compare to Chapter 2 Season 4. Remember all the unique LTMs we got that season that really capitalized on the use of the marvel items this season we just got a reskin of the endgame ltm and even in that marvel day of doom ltm we're just using regular fortnite weapons for the most part why was there a need to focus on only the new items when there's such a big backlog of marvel items in this game that could have been brought back with that being said this season had its ups and downs i think it was all right so i'll give it the same rating as chapter 5 season 1 with season 4 absolute doom getting a 6.5 out of 10 so now i think we can answer the original question was chapter 5 actually bad? The seasons got pretty low ratings. I'd say season 3 for the most part was pretty unbearable, but here we are, right? Still playing the game. I'm willing to bet majority of you guys watching this video played every season this chapter. I'll say that chapter 5, despite the insane amount of new features we got even in season 1 alone, was easily the worst chapter we've had so far. But was it bad? <laughs> Jack Peter Griffin? This doesn't even look like Fortnite, what the hell? What? Mate, this is mental. Just chunking pieces of my soul away to play this. Yeah, it, it was bad. So, here's open for chapter six.